Hello and welcome to this video tutorial from computergargar.com and in this video we are going to look at nine reasons why you should be using tables in Excel. Now there are many reasons why we should be using tables and they're not a new feature. They've been around for over 10 years now but a lot of people that I train are still not aware of them uh, or if they are not fully aware of what they are capable of. So in this tutorial, let's look at just nine of the typical reasons as to why you should be loving and using Excel tables. Now let's begin by actually putting this range I've got on screen into a table. So at the moment, it's just a range of cells. And that's fine, that's great. I can do VLOOKUPs, I can filter, I can create pivot tables, etc. But if I put it into a table, it just creates more meaning to Excel. Rather than being a bunch of cells, it will understand that the rows and columns are related and that will open up a few benefits to us. To do it, it's nice and easy. I would select the range or click a cell amongst the range and I can either go to home and the format as table button and pick a style or I could click insert and the table button on here or even control T. Now I'm going to take the home approach at the moment because you get a lot more options with respect to the styles straight away whereas the other option won't give you those. And I'm just going to right mouse click a style that I want and choose apply and clear so that it clears any formatting currently on my sheet like my grey headers and applies those being used by the style. Just confirm that I've got headers in the first row, click OK, and my data is now in a table. Structured references are another great benefit and reason to start using tables. They take you away from the A1 style referencing, commonly used by Excel users, and provide a meaningful and simple way of referring to the data in that table. So for example, if I wanted to create a calculated column in column I here, just to take 10% off this amount value, in cell I2, I could type equals and then click on that amount value and it references it in this way. This is a structured reference by saying at amount instead of H2. Now sure, I can still use A1 style references. I'm not saying they're bad or that they're wrong. Uh, they're great. <laughs> but when you're dealing with tables, especially like this one, a big long table, then by using structured references will surely make your life easier. So if I was to complete this, and then multiply it by 90% and press enter. The table automatically adds that new column in and copies or fills the formula to the bottom of the table as well. So some great assistance from the table there putting it together. And when people come back to look at these formulas, see how the consistency of just saying amount multiplied by 90%. It's not interested in the current row number or anything like that. Just for another example, if I was going to do a sum if function and start referencing these columns, if I referenced column E, for example, I can still do that. But if I reference this table by its name, and this table is called orders, I can then type an open square bracket and reference the column by their name. So I could simply reference my country column instead of referring to it as column E. I can then carry on with this sum if function and reference my sum range in a similar way as the amount column and this is a nice alternative to saying the criteria is in E, the numbers are in H, add them up. This has got much greater meaning, especially when you're referring to these tables across different sheets. 
This one, granted, is just a few columns to the left. It's not particularly difficult to have a look at column H in a scenario like this. But when you've got multiple worksheets and some of them are very similar, the fact that we can reference them with simple names of column headers and tables is a fantastic advantage of using tables. Now once you have a table and you've got it in the style that you want, another thing you must do is name that table. So up on the design tab, on the far left we have a table name and currently it's called table one. So we would put something meaningful in there, such as orders, and then I can use that name whenever I need to within formulas or, or any other feature of Excel where I need to reference this table. So for example now, in any cell of this sheet or indeed a different sheet, if I was to put the word orders in, Excel knows that I'm referencing this table in this range. I don't need to go and select the cells to create that range or even to put the name of the sheet in or anything like that. I can simply refer to it as orders. When using tables, we do not need to use freeze panes to keep the headers visible on screen. We've already told this table that the headers are the first row. So now, when I scroll down this big list of data, the headers that are shown in the first row will disappear, as row 1 does. But you can see the table is showing the headers up in the column area. So where it would normally say A, B, C, etc., it now has the name of the column or the name of the field. That is the table doing it. It's actually even a little bit more efficient than freeze panes because it doesn't take up any extra space on your screen. And it also means that we could utilize freeze panes in a different way. So we can still use it to freeze uh, a column or two for when we scroll uh, horizontally, but we don't need to rely on it for our headers anymore. You can see the filter arrow has also moved into the header section of the sheet ready for you also. One of the most common questions I get in my Excel training is how your ranges react when additional rows and columns are added to your data. What a great news when working with tables is that they automatically expand to accept those additional rows and columns. So in this table, if I was to shoot to the bottom of it and imagine that we have taken a new order, so let's imagine it's just one, two, three as an ID, and as I carry on putting this data in, you could see the table immediately expand to accept that additional row. I also have this little blue corner thing that I can use to easily adjust the table should uh, something not work as expected. But the fact that that dynamic expansion is happening means that any pivot tables, charts, conditional formatting ranges, formulas that we've got working with this table will be used in the up-to-date range. We don't need to go editing data sources or writing complex formulae with index and offset to try and create dynamic named ranges and these other techniques that are fine but are not going to be as simple as that. With tables, we can filter the data by using slices. So from Excel 2013, we have been able to use slices with tables and not just limited to their use with pivot tables anymore. So if I click amongst this table, and on my insert tab, click on slicer. And this is a very basic table with just two columns, but I can choose membership type and click OK. And I have one of these nice visual slicers that I can position on screen and even style under a different uh, color or create my own style for it. And then I can use this slicer to filter my data. So with just one click of a button, 
I can see either the gold members, the platinum, or the silver. So it's fast and it's visual, much more so than the classic auto filter drop down. And these slicers also work absolutely fantastic with touchscreen devices, such as your Surface tablet or your smartphone. When you have a large table like this one, it is just crying out to be summarized with a pivot table. So on the design tab under table tools, we have a button to summarize immediately with a pivot table. We can click that button. It immediately recognizes the table. I can click OK and then I can start getting involved and performing the analysis that I want to do with our amazing pivot tables. And as simple as that, I maybe have my report, put my chart on the top. So yes, you might be thinking, you don't need a table to use a pivot table, and you would be right. But have you noticed how on the insert tab, let me go back to my table for one moment, how the pivot table button and the table button are kind of next to each other. I think that was intentional. Although they don't need each other to function, the fact that the table automatically expands with additional rows, it can be referenced by a name easily, lends itself perfectly to using it with a pivot table. They are like the bread to the butter. Uh, they blend well together. They're meant to be together. Structured references are another great benefit and reason to start using tables. They take you away from the A1 style referencing, commonly used by Excel users, and provide a meaningful and simple way of referring to the data in that table. So for example, if I wanted to create a calculated column in column I here, just to take 10% off this amount value. In cell I2, I could type equals and then click on that amount value and it references it in this way. This is a structured reference by saying at amount instead of H2. Now sure, I can still use A1 style references. I'm not saying they're bad or that they're wrong. Uh, they're great. <laughs> but when you're dealing with tables, especially like this one, a big long table, then by using structured references will surely make your life easier. So if I was to complete this and then multiply it by 90% and press enter, the table automatically adds that new column in and copies or fills the formula to the bottom of the table as well. So some great assistance from the table there, putting it together. And when people come back to look at these formulas, see how the consistency of just saying amount multiplied by 90%. It's not interested in the current row number or anything like that. Just for another example, if I was going to do a sum if function and start referencing these columns, if I referenced column E, for example, I can still do that. But if I reference this table by its name, and this table is called orders, I can then type an open square bracket and reference the column by their name. So I could simply reference my country column instead of referring to it as column E. I can then carry on with this sum if function and reference my sum range in a similar way as the amount column. And this is a nice alternative to saying the criteria is in E, the numbers are in H, add them up. This has got much greater meaning, especially when you're referring to these tables across different sheets. This one, granted, is just a few columns to the left it's not particularly difficult to have a look at column H in a scenario like this. But when you've got multiple worksheets and some of them are very similar, 
fact that we can reference them with simple names of column headers and tables is a fantastic advantage of using tables. A fantastic feature of Excel is Power Query or Get and Transform as it's otherwise known as. But to be able to use Power Query to shape and transform your data, it needs to be in a table from a worksheet. So I've got this table on screen at the moment and if I clicked on the data tab, I can choose this from table range button. So yes, it does mention range as well, but Power Query will just put it into a table. So yes, it does need to be in a table. When we click on from table range, this will open up the Power Query editor, which has got tons of functionality and tools for cleaning and transforming your messy data and prepare it for your pivot table or your formulas or your filtering or whatever it is that you want to do. So in this example, briefly, I could select these months and then use my transform tab. And one of the most popular features in Power Query is the unpivot columns button. And that will pivot these month headers into tabular data that Excel will appreciate and allow us to analyze further. I could then even go and rename these column headers to something more appropriate. Just leave that one as values. And you can see on the right that all the steps are recorded. So if any of you watching this are new to Power Query, I heavily encourage you to, to watch other YouTube videos to learn about it or to enroll in a course or buy a book, however you like to learn this stuff as it's an amazing tool and it's just another benefit of having to use your tables. If I went to my home tab and close and load two, I can load this back into the worksheet, into a table, let's put it on the same worksheet, let's put it over here for the moment. And if I click OK, I now have a version of this data that I can easily interrogate further. Another huge benefit to using tables is that you can create relationships between them and then you can use that to create multiple table pivots. So for example, on this workbook, I've got four different sheets with a table in each one. I've got customer data, sales data, products data and countries. And this is a typical example where we would use VLOOKUP functions to combine that information all into one big table so that you can then summarize it with a pivot table. But each range is formatted as a table here and each range, each table has got a unique key. So by using the data tab and this relationships button, we can establish relationships between them. I already have a relationship between the sales table and customers, sales table and products. I could create another relationship between the sales table and the uh, countries table, just by finding the necessary key in each one, countries and using the key and a relationship is established. And that means that I can now go and insert a pivot table and use the data model of the workbook and I will be able to create a pivot from multiple tables of data, multiple sheets, rather than creating one big master sheet. So I could go and get my sales amount from the sales table and then bring in data from a completely different table, uh, such as a country, and my pivot table will know how to work with that. I didn't have to use VLOOKUPs to bring country information into my sales table before I could then create a pivot table from it.